hello friends welcome to engineering tutorial so we will uh, continue our discussion with physics of semiconductor devices and the previous video we discussed uh, some of the basic concepts related to semiconductors and the various ways of classifying semiconductors into various categories so in this video we are going to discuss about uh, the atomic structure of semiconductors which will be required to take our discussion forward so we will start with the basic discussion in terms of uh, the Bose atomic model okay we'll try to understand semiconductors from the point of view of Bohr's atomic model so Niels Bohr uh, he gave uh, an explanation of atomic structure related to the movement of electrons around the nucleus and the energy associated with each uh, orbit or uh, the path taken by the electrons while they move around the nucleus so on the basis of that the conclusions that we can draw from Bohr's atomic model is that an atom it consists of a positively charged nucleus consisting of protons and neutrons around which the negatively charged electrons revolve or move in circular orbits fixed circular paths then the electrons that revolves around the nucleus in fixed path in designated orbits the radius of those orbits are fixed fixed distance from the nucleus okay the orbits they are at fixed distance away from the nucleus that means the radius of the various orbits they are fixed and all of these electrons revolving in a particular orbit they have fixed amount of energy associated with them and that is directly proportional to the radius of the orbit so the larger the orbit the greater will be the energy okay greater will be the energy associated with it so now another important thing here uh, which is very uh, you know uh, important from the point of view of our discussion related to semiconductors is the transition of electrons okay from one orbit to another so if an electron in any orbit revolving in any orbit let's say is given some amount of additional energy then in the form of anything basically in the form of photons light photons or heat it moves to a higher orbit okay after absorbing the energy that electron revolving in a lower orbit will move to a higher energy orbit and this process is called as excitation excitation of electrons and those electrons at the higher state are called as excited state so these excited electrons they do not remain in that excited state for a long period of time and after a certain fixed interval of time they lose the acquired energy and drop down to their initial lower energy state okay so it is a continuous process it happens okay with the absorption of energy basically in the form of heat or light photons quanta quantized energy the electrons they continuously move to higher states excited states and keep and the electrons those who are already in the excited states they drop to their initial state so this is a continuous process it happens so similarly if we want to study the most popular semiconductor which is used in the electronic industry silicon it has an atomic number 14 and uh, the electronic configuration is in this way two electrons in the innermost orbit close to the nucleus then we have eight electrons in the next orbit and in the outer orbit we have four valence electrons 
so these four valence electrons are very 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 important when it comes to the uh, formation of the semi silicon semiconductor so these four valence electrons in the outer orbit they form covalent bonds with the you know neighboring silicon atoms to form the uh, atomic structure of silicon so it will be very much helpful when we discuss the fabrication of n type and p type semiconductors so so this is the uh, atomic structure of silicon so here another important thing is the energy level in the semiconductor so from the bohr's atomic model we just concluded that the electrons in each orbit they have a fixed amount of energy associated with them it is because of the orbit in which they are revolving around the nucleus so these energies that are associated with each orbit that is called as the energy level for example if we take here the silicon semiconductor each orbit will have a certain amount of fixed amount of energy associated with it so that energy can be com conveniently described or represented with the help of energy level diagrams okay energy level diagrams so here the orbits can be divided into three categories the innermost orbit the first orbit with the minimum radius then the middle orbit with the intermediate radius and the valence the outermost orbit which containing the valence electrons so here as per bohr's atomic model the outermost orbit will have the maximum energy followed by the middle orbit and the inner orbit so the energy level diagram of semiconductors it should look something like this okay r1 r2 r3 the outer orbit has the maximum energy middle orbit intermediate level and the innermost orbit with the minimum energy so it can be represented in the form of lines single constant value this is true for an isolated atom okay for an isolated atom which has no interaction with the any surrounding atoms for example let's say we have a single atom of silicon for that this energy level diagram is true but when we take off the example of you know real semiconductor silicon the atomic structure into consideration it is surrounded by several atoms it is in covalent bond formation with a lot of silicon atoms and because of this interaction between several atoms which are very tightly packed the energy the energies of associated with each electron it is not fixed it it is within a certain range so it forms bands of energy and it is represented in this way okay not in this way this is for an isolated silicon atom and this is for the silicon structure okay orbit 1 minimum range of energy okay it fluctuates in between the these two levels then we have the second orbit the middle orbit and then we have the outermost orbit yes it has maximum energy but also it is bands of energy okay not a single line not a single fixed level it it is range of energies which is represented in the form of bands of energy so here the first energy level it is for the innermost orbit the second energy level is for the middle orbit and the third or the maximum energy level is for the outermost orbit for silicon now the energy bands why is this discussion very very important so the energy bands in semiconductors we can 
divided into three categories actually it's two but let's say we have three categories first one is the outermost orbit the energy associated with the outermost orbit the valence electrons so the range of energies possessed by this outermost orbit okay the outermost orbit the third orbit this one maximum energy that is called as the valence band so as per the bose atomic model greater the radius of the orbit higher the energy so for silicon the outermost orbit has the maximum energy range of energy that is called as the valence band energy next is conduction band so what is conduction band now the electrons in the valence band they in some cases they are loosely attached to the nucleus they overcome the nuclear force of attraction okay electrons are negatively charged nucleus is positively charged so there is force of attraction which attracts them towards the nucleus but in some cases these electrons they are loosely attached to the orbit or with the absorption of energy they become detached and move out of the valence orbit the outer orbit so they become free electrons okay so when a lot of free electrons are formed the energy possessed by those free electrons it contributes to a certain range of energies and that energy range possessed by those free electrons those detached electrons that have overcome the nuclear force of attraction and have escaped from the outermost orbit they are called as the conduction band okay they are called as the conduction band now when we have discussed about valence band and conduction band there is it it is very much necessary that we discuss another thing which is the which is the forbidden energy gap now the amount of energy required for the valence electrons okay the outermost electrons to overcome the nuclear force of attraction okay the amount of energy that must be supplied for these valence electrons to overcome the nuclear force of attraction and escape from it and become detached and free electrons that is called as the forbidden energy gap the the valence electrons must overcome this uh forbidden energy gap this excess uh you know barrier we can say energy barrier so that they can uh, escape from the nuclear force of attraction and become detached to become free electrons or conducting electrons so that is called as the forbidden energy gap so in terms of the valence band conduction band and forbidden energy gap we can now understand the behavior of conductors insulators and semiconductors now for conductors the conduction band the lower portion of the conduction band and the upper portion some of the upper portion of the valence band they are overlap okay it means there is no energy gap required or by you know a, you know a small amount of stimulation small amount of energy can cause a large change in current okay a small amount of electromotive force or electric potential can bring about a large change in current so there is there is no energy barrier at all okay so a small amount of stimulation electrical stimulation can bring about a large response okay large change in current so the valence band and conduction band are in overlapped manner for insulators the energy barrier the forbidden energy gap is very 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 high greater than almost 6 electron volts so here a sufficiently large amount of energy must be supplied from the outside so that 
the electrons in the valence band can overcome the nuclear force of attraction to become free electrons and the material or the substance can become or can be converted into a conducting state so the energy barrier is very high in case of insulators the distance between the valence band and the conduction band the energy gap is very high greater than 6 electron volt so here the semiconductors come into play here the energy gap between the valence band and the conduction band for semiconductors it is very small as compared to that of the insulators okay normally it lies within one electron volt one electron volt see in case of insulators it is greater than six electron volt in all the cases you will find it much greater than six electron volt the minimum level is six electron volt but for semiconductors they are within one electron volt you will always find the energy barrier the energy gap the forbidden energy gap will be within one electron volt so that's where that's the beauty of semiconductors so their you know conductance is small as compared to the conductor see for conductors it is overlapped for insulators it is very high but for semiconductors it is somewhere in between within one electron volt so it will require some kind of an external stimulation in terms of electric potential or energy or light heat energy whatever so that the valence band electrons can overcome the nuclear force of attraction and move to the conduction band or become free electrons so it is less as compared to that of the insulators okay the energy requirement is very less so that's where the semiconductors are uh, very 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 important so the energy diagram for uh, the semiconductors can be for silicon can be in this way the innermost orbit energy level minimum then the middle orbit a little bit high valence band a little bit high maximum in terms of the orbits and then we have the conduction band okay the range of energies possessed by the free electrons so the transition of electrons from valence band or the outer orbit to the conduction band can be with the help of the absorption of energy light heat or any external impurity that we add so whenever there is a transition of an electron from valence band to conduction band it creates one excess free electron in the conduction band and a whole vacant electronic site in the valence band so that's why in semiconductors we have two main type of charge carriers electrons negative charge carriers holes positive charge carriers actually holes is a you know hypothetical concept a vacant electronic site is called as a hole now a vacancy for electron that vacant spot it has a strong force of attraction for electrons so an electron in the you know neighboring spot it will rush to occupy that space i've already made a video related to what electrons and holes are so you can check out that video so the, there are two ways in which the conductivity of semiconductors can be increased one temperature increasing the temperature and next is the addition of impurity so the addition of impurity to an intrinsic semiconductor that creates extrinsic semiconductor the p and n type semiconductor so there are two ways so here i just wanted to make you understand about the atomic structure of uh, semiconductors the energy level diagram okay and uh, the basic concepts related to uh, valence band conduction band and forbidden energy gap and what is its significance for semiconductors so i hope you like this video and please subscribe my channel engineering tutorial for more such videos related to engineering science and technology have a great day thank you very much